when it comes to the questions you ask, uh, you want to ask questions in high leverage areas. In other words, if you're going to go fish, do you want to fish in ponds that have no fish or fish that are well fed? Or do you want to you know, fish in ponds with really big, super hungry fish? That would increase the odds that maybe you might want to catch something that's worthwhile. So by going to the extremes of our whale curves, we have huge winners and huge losers, and asking five whys, why, 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 why are they super winners, super losers, and getting our insights, and from those we fashion experiments that become plays, and you know, that we roll out, we scale, you know, that's what we want to do. And when we, we get to those root causes and we're looking at solutions or possibilities, there's a concept called ideation. You know, how many ideas can we generate? If we come up with, I know, I've got an idea. Okay, great, let's do that idea. We're sort of locking ourselves into one thing. We say, well, let's, let's noodle this around. How do the, how they solve this kind of problem in other retail channels? So we borrow ideas from other places. You know, if you want to take care of people in an emergency room on Saturday night at the hospital very quickly, you go look at how people change tires at the Indianapolis 500 Speedway in 15 seconds, and you see what's going on. You say, well, wait a minute. Couldn't we take that choreography and apply that concept to how we wheel somebody in here and take care of them if they're bleeding to death or whatever? So you go steal ideas. Now you have to adapt them and make them your own for your context. But come up with four, five, six, seven, eight ideas. Um, and you'll find them in alternative channels because these, these problems exist and other channels have solved them in, in their own way. A good experiment is well planned and it's designed to do it very fast, very quickly, very focused, very cheap, very simple, only one variable, so that when you do something, you can learn something. A lot of people make a mistake and say, well, what would you learn? Gosh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not even sure why it screwed up. There were just so many variables or a lot of th theories as to why we lost that game or you know, whatever the, 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 the incident was. But once we've done that, then of course it increases the odds we will learn, and then we'll reflect that step four, ask more questions, and then we'll try it again smarter. So there is this issue of I have a vision, I don't know, I don't have a roadmap to get there. If we had a roadmap to get there, everybody be already down the road and there'd be no innovation. We'd be a fast follower at best and there's no juice to be had. We want to be the first guy to get all the gold, let everybody else work on the scraps, you know, if they come along too late. And then on the reflection part, uh, a lot of people don't want to reflect on things that didn't work out because the assumption is, well, if, it's not, if I can't do it perfectly the first time, I don't want to do it. Well, when you were a kid, do you think that anybody got up and walked the first time perfectly? No, we fell all around the place, but we kept doing it. Do you think anybody rode a bike the first time? No. So we just need to say, hey, get over it. Whenever we're to do something new for the first time, we're going to fall off. So we just want to make sure we do it on grass, the bike's really small. I mean, what are the things we can do to minimize the downside, minimize the pain, the risk, and maximize the learning upside, and just get over it and start moving this wheel around? So that's a, a, a little bit deeper look at hopefully your new innovation meme, the wheel of learning. Thanks.